In our last video, we defined what a Markov chain is and we looked at an example. In this video, we'll look at another example and we'll talk about how we form the stochastic matrix P. In this example, we're given that a school cafeteria has three drink options for breakfast, water, milk, and juice. Now, as we read through this example, I'm going to draw a diagram to illustrate how the students are changing their drink selections. First of all, I have three drink categories. I have water, I have milk, and I have juice. In this problem, it says that 20% of those who drank water one day will switch to milk the next day. So I'm going to draw an arrow from water to milk and label it with 0.20 for 20%. And then it says that 10% will switch to juice. So I'm going to draw an arrow from water to juice and label it with 0.10 for 10%. Now this only accounts for 30% of those who drank water. So the remaining 70% must stick with water the next day. So I'm going to draw an arrow from water to itself and label it with 0 0.70 for 70%. Next, we're told that 30% of those who drank milk one day will switch to water the next day. So I'm going to draw an arrow from milk to water and label it with 0 0.30. And it says that 25% will switch to juice. So I'm going to draw an arrow from milk to juice and label it with 0 0.25. And that accounts for 55% of those who drank milk one day. So there's a remaining 45% that's unaccounted for. So that tells me that 45% of those who drank milk will stick with milk the next day. Lastly, we're told that 35% of those who drank juice one day will switch to water. So I'm going to draw an arrow from juice to water and label it with 0 0.35. And then it says that 15% will switch to milk. So I'm going to draw an arrow from juice to milk and label it with 0 0.15. So that accounts for 50% of those who drank juice one day. The remaining 50% will stick with juice. So I'm going to draw an arrow from juice back to itself and label it with 0 0.50. So then it says that on the first day, 50% of students drank water, 30% drank milk, and 20% drank juice. Part A says construct the stochastic matrix P. Now, when we did our previous example, the way we constructed our matrix was we came up with a system of equations and then transformed that system into a matrix equation. Now, there is a faster way to construct our stochastic matrix. First, I'm going to start by constructing a 3x3 three three matrix. It's 3x3 three three because I have three categories, water, milk, and juice. Now, on top, I'm going to write from, and then on the side, I'm going to write to. Now, I have my three categories, water, milk, and juice, and I'm going to repeat that down the side, water, milk, and juice. Now, to fill in the entries of this matrix, I just put in the percent of people going from one category to the other. So in the top left entry here, we have from water to water. So I'm looking for the percentage of students that have water one day and will stick with water the next day. So that's this arrow here, and we see that it's labeled with 70%. So I'm going to fill in 0 0.7 for the top left entry of the matrix. Next in the top middle entry, I'm going from milk to water. So I'm looking at the arrow in our diagram from milk to water, and we see that it's labeled with 0 0.30. So it's 30%. So in the top middle entry, I'm going to write in 0.3. In the top right entry, I'm going from juice to water. So I look at my diagram, trace out the arrow from juice to water, and see that it's labeled with 0.35. So 35% of students who had juice one day will switch to water. So I'm going to fill in 0.35 in my matrix. Let's look at a few more. In the middle left entry here, I'm going from water to milk. So in my diagram, I trace out the arrow from water to milk, and it's labeled with 20%. So I write in 0 0.2 for the middle left entry. 
Next, in the middle entry, I have from milk to milk. So that's the arrow going from milk back to itself. And that's labeled with 0 0.45. So I fill in 0 0.45 for that entry. So let's fill in the rest of these entries. In the middle right entry, I'm going from juice to milk. And that in the diagram is labeled with 0 0.15. Bottom left entry, I'm going from water to juice, and that's labeled with 0 0.1. In the bottom middle, I'm going from milk to juice, and that's labeled with 0 0.25. And then lastly, from juice to juice, that's labeled with 0 0.5. So that's our stochastic matrix P. It's the matrix with entries 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.15 and lastly 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Again, you'll notice that this is a stochastic matrix because every column has entries that add up to one and every entry in this matrix is non-negative. Next, we're asked, what is the initial state vector? First, we need to define what our state vectors are. Our state vectors xk have three entries and they need to be consistent with our stochastic matrix. In our stochastic matrix, we had things in the order water, then milk, then juice. So we need to keep that same order in our vector. So in our xk, the top entry will refer to the percentage of students who drank water k days after the first day. The middle entry will be the percentage of students who drank milk k days after the first day. And lastly, the bottom entry will be the percentage of students who drank juice k days after the first day. So our initial state vector x0 will be the vector where the top entry is the percent of people who drank water on the first day and that's 50 percent which I'll write 0 0.5. For the middle entry we need the percent who drank milk on the first day so that's 30 percent or 0 0.3 and then lastly the bottom entry is the percent who drank juice on the first day that's 20 percent or 0 0.2. So that's my initial state vector. So in the last part we're asked what percent of students drank milk on the third day? So the third day is two days after the first day so I'm interested in x2. Now remember for Markov chains we have that xk plus 1 is equal to p times xk. So if I want x2 I would do p times x1. Well, I don't know what x1 is, so first I need to find x1. To do that, I would do x1 is equal to p times x0. So that's the matrix 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 times the vector the initial state vector 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 gives you the vector 0 0.51, 0 0.265, and 0 0.225. So this means that on the second day, 51% will drink water, 26.5% will drink milk, and 22.5% will drink juice. So now if I want to figure out what's happening on the third day, I would do x2 equals p times x1. So that's the matrix 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 times the vector 0 0.51, 0.265, 0 0.225. Doing this multiplication, you get the vector 0 0.515, 0 0.255, and then lastly 0 0.23. So in the end, we have that 51.5% will drink water on the third day, 25.5% will drink milk on the third day, and lastly, 23% will drink juice on the third day. So the answer we're looking for is 25.5% will drink milk on the third day. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.